Welcome to episode 114 of the Thunder Underground podcast. My name is Trent. I'm joined here by Jason, and we've got a cornucopia of stuff to talk about. <laughs> a cornucopia, nice. Made it 113 episodes without saying that. So, well, you know, first time for everything. Right. What do we want to talk about first? Well, the first thing is the the sad news. You yeah. Know, we talked yeah. about last year, like every other episode, we were talking about someone that passed away. But thankfully, we hadn't had to do that that much this year. True. So far. But Sib Hashian from Boston, formerly of Boston, original drummer, passed away this past week on the Rock Legends cruise. And mid performance. Yeah. Which is shitty. I mean, it's shitty anyways, but that's real shitty. The way I, you know, I've seen people say this and I'll, I'll say it too. It's shitty for people watching. Yes. But. I think it was Mike DiPatrillo that wrote it. He's like, look, I want to die either playing the drums or having sex. You know, so. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, he True. got to do I, I get obviously that. something that he, he went yeah. out, his final breath was doing something he loved, which yeah. is still, you don't want to take your final breath doing anything, but there you go. I know. <clears throat> well, I mean, and uh, Sib was the drummer on probably the, one of the finest rock records to ever exist. Yeah. One of the best records ever. Yeah, in the history of anything. Uh, so we can't not talk about it. And if 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 you are out there and you think that the first Boston record isn't that good, then I want you to turn this off right now. I'd put and, you in the same category and, I put pedophiles in. Yeah, and, yeah. Turn this off right now and go watch CBS or something. I mean, because it's just fucked up. Go watch The Big Bang Theory. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well, really. Because, I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't like somewhat this record. Yeah. And I think anybody that plays on this record should be revered. So, I mean, that's why we're talking about it. So. Yeah, Tom, Sh- you know, Scholl's obviously the mastermind behind this. Yeah, Brad yeah. Delp I mean, is obviously the recognizable yeah. voice, but, but this guy played the drums on this album. And so you got to talk about it. That's, I mean, you have to. I mean, it, this album is, it's like Appetite for Destruction. Like every song's a fucking single. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh. It's literally every song. Yeah. yeah. You can't, you cannot beat this record. You can't try, but it's not going to happen. There's stuff like, like you said, Appetite, Hysteria, albums like that that have 80% of it's a single. Yeah. This, like, there's eight songs and every single one of them. You can turn on the radio right now on any station in America, and you're probably going to hear one of these songs within 15 minutes. That's exactly right. And that's not a bad thing, because all eight of them are fucking amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. And and he one, played on the second album, too, and it's amazing did, as well. Yeah. Well, one thing I always, I didn't like about Boston, and there's, not them, but there's 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 not really any good footage of them playing live. You know, right. there's no DVD, obviously, because it was back in the 70s. And, you know, I think if you look up YouTube, I, I did that on YouTube once. And there's a, an outdoor show, but it's got a big time stamp across the whole fucking screen. You know, and but you have to just put up with it, you know. And so I wish I wish there's something more definitive of that classic lineup that you could watch. But there isn't. And that sucks. That's weird, too, because so many... Most any major band from that era, you can find mm-hmm. there was at least something. Sometime yeah. they captured it, you know, and yeah. released a home video or just for promo stuff. Yeah. Everybody's got something out there. It's just weird that they don't, you know. Yeah. And and, and I, I got to see Boston about 20 years ago. Was He He wasn't there in the 90s, I, I don't he? think so. Because no. I think he was actually still there in the 80s when they did the third album, but then mm-hmm. left around that time. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, but all I know is uh, it's it's a huge loss. This is a monumental record, and you know anything that has to do with this, the first two Boston records, should be discussed. Yeah, and how the hell they're not in the Hall of Fame blows my fucking <sighs> yeah, mind. It's another fucking yeah, because the Hall of Fame they they, they want earthy, unfun shit. Okay, <laughs> they don't want stuff that's you know you know, hard rock and bright and happy and good times. You know, they want to, you know, they want to fucking play their washboards and their acoustic guitars and whatever. 
Well, I don't think they have got to the Fuck washboard area yet, but they I will. I hope we don't, but anyway, they will. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm getting pissed just thinking about it. Let's move on. Mark my words. <laughs> Mumford and Sons will get in before Boston. Well, uh, you're probably <laughs> right on that one, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry, that's random as hell, but <laughs> I don't know where the hell we got yeah. off on that. But yes, rest in peace to Sib. Yes. Like I said, big loss in the the world of music. Well, getting into happier things, let's yes. play some music. Yeah, definitely. We're going to play a band called Panic Device okay. out of Tyler, Texas. And let's just get right into this and then talk about it. We'll send from Panic Device. They're out of Tyler, Texas. They're playing Rocklahoma this year on the Camp Darkside stage. Yes. Actually on a Sunday, right? Yeah, May 28th, Sunday. Yeah, I think they're playing in the afternoon, so they'll be one of the last couple bands before the, the main gates open. Okay. So, be over there. You have no excuse. That's right. The music never stops now at Rocklahoma, for the most part. Never. You know, I mean, it'll stop from like four in the morning until what time does Chris start? Nine. It starts at nine, nine yeah. yeah. So, you get a few hours of break there. But someone's still cranking music loud as hell somewhere, so really not. That's right. That's right. But back to Panic Device. This is a great song, just a great, you know, three minute hard rock jam in your face. And, you know, I love songs like these that kind of, you know, draw from all different kinds of elements and it's the type of hard rock song that I think people that like all different styles of rock could really grab, you know, gravitate towards. And I can't wait to see them live because I imagine they're going to be a good live band. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, great, great vocals, smart guitar. I can't wait to see these guys live. It's going to be good. Yeah. Like we said, May 28th, Camp Dark Side, the Dark Side stage there in GA. We're going to be playing more of these bands, you know, in the coming next couple months leading up to Rocklahoma. Yeah. You know, to help promote this stage and also Camp Jaeger and the Axis stage. You know, you'll hear music from all these bands, I believe. That's right. Well, a band we're not going to be playing music from because we don't have legal rights as Seven does. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'll talk about them, goddammit. Yeah, we're going to talk about them because we love Seven Dust. Of course. Since the first moment I heard them 20 mm -hmm. years ago now, yeah, I've been a fanboy. That's right. Admittedly, and it's... Hasn't stopped yet, <clears throat> and the reason we're talking about it is because last week, I believe it was St. Patrick's Day, May, March 17th, mm -hmm. in their hometown of Atlanta, they did their 20th anniversary show where they played the debut album in its entirety. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, a few other songs after the album. But we both took the time to, to watch this on YouTube. You know, someone in attendance filmed it. It was filmed from the front first row or right up on the barrier. So, yeah. so it was good quality, looked good, and even sounded good. Because that's my thing about sometimes you watch these videos and they'll they'll either sound good and look like shit or look good and sound like shit. Yeah, exactly. And this one, this one had had both of them. So yeah, it sounded decent. It wasn't all, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. makes me turn it off immediately. Some people just turn this off because of that. Uh, well. <laughs> It, I'm just my small with. sacrifice to right. get my fucking point across. Right. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah. So I mean what are we've seen Seven Dust many, many times. Yeah. And they never disappoint. So never. it's not like I was watching this wondering if it was gonna be good. We knew <laughs> we knew it was gonna be good. So what I mean what is there anything that jumped out about it to you? Um you know, the first well, thing is obvious you're getting to hear some songs that Yeah. You never get to hear live. That and that's what jumped out to me was, you know, uh, Terminator, Too Close to Hate, Speak. Prayer. Uh, prayer. Fuck, I mean, that's my favorite Seven Dust song of all time. Is it really? It's Prayer, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, and, you know, it's something I don't do at all. I probably should. But, you know, uh, me being non-affiliated, I don't really get, get around to that much. But the song itself is fucking great. Yeah. And, you know, the thing that I got from this, uh, other than, you know, ah, you know, we heard these songs, I've heard them in a while. Uh, it just really, it really took me back to that record and how important that was to me and how, you know, important that band was to me when they came out. And, 
you know, just glad that they are still around and not a lot of bands from that era are still around. And, you know, maybe some bands from that era shouldn't still be around. But Seven Dust should, and they've they've held strong, and uh, they've weathered all the changes, and they're still relevant. And um, so I think it was it was great that they went back and you know kind of tipped their cap to this album. It's a great record, uh, brought back a lot of memories, and uh, <clears throat> it, it was it was just great to see it, and it made me feel really old. But that's a whole other <laughs> right. discussion. Yeah. Yeah, that does make you feel old. Right? I mean, 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Seven Dust has been around for 20 years. You know, when I mean, you, yeah, you when talk we were about kids, it. the Beatles have been around for 20 years. <laughs> I mean, fucking think about it. It's yeah. just fucked. Yeah, it but, makes sense when you talk about older bands being yeah. around for a long time, but when you talk about Seven Dust, you don't feel like it should be 20 years. But I know. But yeah, I think that they've lasted this whole time, never going away, staying steady because. Well, first off, they were better than most everybody from that era. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, big time. They got lumped into new metal, you know, mm-hmm. which I can see at times. But, you know, they really didn't sound like a new metal band, no. so to speak. No, they just sounded more just, you know, heavy metal or just hard rock. Yeah. Maybe just more of a groove. Um, but, you know, they never had a fucking DJ. They never had a fucking rapper. Uh, and they always had tunefulness, melody, um catchiness and you know i think that's that's what did it for him yeah but so i think they got unfairly lumped but i can understand why they did get thrown into that category yeah but when you look at bands like say look at way before new metal when you look at like you know the 80s rock glam era Mm -hmm. you had a band like tesla who unfairly kind of got lumped into that category you know but sure they were part of the times yeah. they had hits so it makes sense that they're part of that category it, but they transcended it as well and they stayed around because they just never really swayed from what they were doing that's right and it fit the it, times it, no matter what time it was the same way seven dust does it, and it's it's fucking crazy you just said that i mean it really is because earlier i'm thinking about we're getting ready to do this what do i want to say and i thought that same exact thing i mean they're the they're they're kind of like Tesla was. I mean, you could yeah maybe kind of lump them in there, but not really. Um, <clears throat> they just seem a little. They go a little deeper than you know, uh, than the usual new metal fare. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I can't elaborate on what you just said. You said it all right there. I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, it's really, um, yeah, what you said. <laughs> well, hey, you remember. At Rock, Oklahoma, a few years ago, whenever they started playing Modern Day yeah, Cowboy, <laughs> yeah, Tesla was headlining that night. Yeah. Seven Dust was playing a few bands before him, and they said, you know, Lejean started talking about how it was an honor to be playing before Tesla. They all grew up fans, so I thought that yeah. was kind of cool hearing a band that you don't hear and think that relate the two at all. Yeah, and then yeah, they started playing yeah it's some like bars when, from Modern Day Cowboy. I know it's like when Billy Corgan was on the cover of Guitar World with Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> right. Where the where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> right. Well, one one thing I thought was cool about this concert when you watch it was that a lot of times, you know, the shows I've been to are bands playing an album in its entirety, or the ones I've watched on video. Usually, they kick into it and just like pound through this album, mm-hmm. like you know, here's the album, here's how it sounded, whatever, but. They did it like a show when Lejean's talking between every song and talking yeah. about the next song, co- yeah. kind of like, you know, a storyteller or something yeah, like most of the time. where they were at when the song was happening yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And that's not, at least from the ones I've seen, that doesn't seem too common on these yeah. albums and entirety shows. So I yeah. thought that was kind of cool, a little bit different. So they they just played it out like it was a normal concert, but threw in, you know, some cool tidbits for the fans, you know, on that Definitely. kind of stuff. Well, you know, let's hope they're around for another 20 years. Oh, yeah. You know? You know, they they will be. Yeah. I think what they've had, how many albums do they have now? Uh, I don't know. Like 10? I, I've, I've told you, they're they're kind of like the Ramones or the Motorhead, you know? I mean, they, they're, they're never going to, it's, you know, you're never going to see Seven Dust headline in an arena, but you're always going to see them respected, you're always going to see them working, and you're always going to see them fill uh, decent-sized venues. Yeah. And uh 
I think that's pretty that's pretty uh pretty admirable and uh pretty respect respectable. Yeah. And they all seem like, you know, good dudes from what I Yeah. Know. That, yeah. Hey, we met LeJean when it, we 20 did. years ago. 20 years ago. We did. <laughs> right when they first came out, you know, it was like we went to the Roar tour, if anyone remembers this thing, and it was No one's going to remember yeah. me and you, that's it. There might be someone listening to Far Off Man that went to this in another town. Well, Justin went to it, right? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it was headlined by Iggy Pop, but Iggy Pop didn't play the Tulsa Stop. Mm-hmm. And it had Reverend Horton Heat and Sponge and the Bloodhound Gang. The Nixons. Yeah. Um, Seven Dust. God, who else? I don't know. I don't know, but then Seven Dust was pretty early in the bill because they were brand new. Yes. And I just... I remember that I was most excited about them, even, you know, at that point, I was a big fan of the Nixons and even the yes, Bloodhound Gang. And, right. You know, but I was just so excited because I'd got that CD and just absolutely loved it, and it lived up to everything I hoped it'd be that yeah, day, too. Was, yeah, it was insane. Like, I still remember the first time I heard Seven Dust was I heard Bitch on the radio yeah. on Z104.5, like, super late at night, that that show they used to have called, like, Into the Pit or something. Yeah. And uh, Okay. They played it, and I'm like, man, I don't know if I even heard him say who it was. Like, I came in, or they, I think it started, and then he talked about it afterwards. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea who it was, and I was just listening to it. And I'm like, man, this guy sounds like Whitfield Crane. This can't be <laughs> Whitfield Crane. There's no way he would be on the radio right now. This is, would be too amazing. Yeah. And then once he started, it got to the heavy part. I'm like, no, that's not Whitfield Crane. But anyway, I just... You mentioned melodic earlier. That's one thing that always jumped out. And plus, Lejean's just one of the best singers in rock yeah, and roll. He is. Oh, yeah. definitely. I, you know, I think if I can remember correctly, I could be way off here, but it seems like the first time I remember him hearing him was uh, late at night on KMOD, and uh, they played "Born to Die" on the metal show. Oh, really? And I, I, I you, you'd think it would be one of those singles like "Bitch" or "Black," but. I don't know why that seems it was it, we were in Thrasher's car. I don't know, maybe not, but that's from my foggy memory. That's the first thing I remember about those guys. So yeah, there you go. and that song is insane. That's probably their heaviest song they've ever done. I think that was on a soundtrack, so maybe it was played. Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just this whole band, you know, and they've stuck together this whole time. That's the other great thing, and. Morgan Rose back there doing vocals and drums. Yeah, it's and perfect he's timing. Such an unorthodox drummer. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he does things so outside the box. It's great. Yeah. But yeah, just get on YouTube, look this thing up. You know, it's if you like that first album, which I can't imagine, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. If you like Seven Dust or if you like heavy metal. <laughs> there you go. Look it up. And I can't wait to hear the next album because Kill the Flaw was fan fucking test. Yes, it was. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. Well, let's play some more music while we're while we're going here. Why not? Play some we're talking about new metal. This band's got some new metal tendencies. Crane Technique out of Joplin, Missouri. Joplin Mo. Hell yeah. We're going to play the song called Pills.
Pills from Crane Technique. Yet another great song from these guys. Yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah, we played them a couple of times before because we love them. Yes. That's a good word to use, love. That's right. I feel love for these guys' music. I like that. I like yeah. that. And, you know, we've had them on the podcast. Yeah. Go look that one up. Yeah, all four of them were on here. We had a full band episode, and that was a, That's a good right. one. That's right. And you got a tattoo from Dennis. That's right. Have I even talked about that on the podcast? Well, you're I doing think, it now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, he does. He's a tattoo artist in, in Joplin. And I didn't do a type when I get a Pantera tattoo I've been wanting for a while. So there you go. Nice. But for the music side of this thing, his voice, man, it's just... Every time we talk about it, I mention it's just crazy that this guy <clears throat> never sang, never did anything up until about two years ago now yeah. when they started this band. And, you know, here he is. He's great live as well. Great stage presence. All four of these guys do. And they're just a, it's a joy to watch. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And we're going to be seeing him again, once again at the Shrine. April 28th. Yeah. 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 The DMG Productions is putting on a pre-rock party with four of the bands that they're having out at the dark side stage at Rocklahoma this year. And besides Crane Technique, there's also going to be Switchback, Caliber Theory, and Red Devil Lies. Yes, Red Devil Lies. Yeah. We played them a while back, and they're pretty badass themselves. Going to be a face melter. Yeah. Yeah, definitely looking forward to this one at the Shrine in Tulsa. Great venue to see a show if you haven't. Yeah. It's the last great place in Tulsa to see a show now that uh, Downtown, Downtown Lounge. Lounge is sadly gone. Sadly. It's actually not the last great place to see a show. The Canes Ballroom is the greatest place in the world to see a show, but That's I'm just right. trying to be dramatic. Sorry. Well, hey, you know, hopefully the Shrine will have uh, will have their F5 in stock for me that night. Yeah, there you go. it's going to get crazy, Trent. Yeah, we'll have to carry you out of there. Wouldn't be the first time. Jason Carroll, I hope you're with me for this show. It'll take yeah. like 17 <laughs> motherfuckers to carry my big ass out of there, so <laughs> sign up now. Yeah. There's, there's a free Thunder Underground koozie in it for you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll even put an F5 in the koozie. How about mm-hmm. that? So it's sweet in that deal. I'm good for it. I'm good for one. Yeah. You know, to my 18. <laughs> right. Well, we want to talk about some stuff that's completely different from Crane Technique and Seven Dust and everything. There's a brand new single from the Night Flight Orchestra. Oh, man. And if you don't know that name, please look them up. There's, you know, if, if you're into real heavy stuff, maybe you won't dig it. But if you just like hard rock and rock and roll you're gonna absolutely love this band and if you're into heavy music you've probably heard of them because it features an all-star cast of guys from heavy bands it's got bjorn speed strid and david anderson from soil work and it's got sherry d'angelo from arch enemy charlie oh charlie D'Angelo. whatever fuck his name is <laughs> it's swedish I'm, right? a, I'm i'm a name guy sorry <laughs> yeah. it's, it's swedish <laughs> fuck you you prejudiced motherfucker <laughs> I was joking. God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's got a couple other dudes in it too. <laughs> and it's uh it's basically a super group of people from melodic death metal bands. Yes. And, and, and here here's something that like uh, you know, I've wondered and we can talk about it now. It's it, it's like it the first thing I want to say is, is like if you like bands like Foreigner and Journey and blah 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 blah. You know, you'll like these guys, but they don't sound anything like that. So but, why the fuck do I say that, Trent? Well, they have, it, just, it, it just sounds like it's from like late 70s, early 80s rock, you know, before all the glam stuff started coming in. I don't know. Well, they have song, you know, they have two albums now and they have, they'll have a song that sounds like Foreigner, you yeah. know, all of a sudden. Then you'll hear a song that sounds like Kiss and then you'll hear a song that sounds like Sammy Hagar. Mm-hmm. You'll hear a song that sounds like Fleetwood Mac. And yeah. a song that sounds like Journey. Yeah. Then a song that sounds like, you know, any other arena rock or, like you said, late 70s, early 80s well, AOR band you can think of. I mean, their sound is so triumphant and so big and, you know, it's so just, I mean, it's just feel good stuff. Yeah. I mean, and I'm, I'm going to call it now. That'll be one of our top albums of this year. Yeah, if not number one, because it usually happens that way. We love this band so much, and I think what they're doing is so important. And I think that's because you know they come from where they come from, 
And that just speaks to the diversity of, you know, that we should all be displaying. And I just, I really, really enjoy that aspect of this group. Yeah. It's just cool to hear, uh, speeds like voice change, mm-hmm. not change, just like him do other stuff than what you hear in soil work. Cause in yeah. soil work, you get two types of voices from him and that's pretty much it. Yeah. But in this, it's, you're getting a whole new thing. And that second album, you know, you saw him, you know, move a little further in what he was doing. And then now on this new song, Midnight Flyer, yes. it's even crazy. Like he's hitting notes that I don't, I don't know if he hit on the first two that no, I remember off the top of my head. he's getting up there, man. Yeah. And it's, this song is as good as anything from those first two albums. Mm-hmm. That's how good it is, I think. Yeah, and, definitely. Because I remember when I first heard, you know, what was the first single off the second album, Living for the Nighttime? Yeah. And I mean, it's a good song, but I didn't love it as much as I loved that first album. But there's a lot of stuff on that second album that is fantastic and as great as that album, first album. But this new song, you know, as soon as I heard it, I was like, holy shit. That's one of those ones you hit repeat on. It's like six and a half Mm -hmm. minutes long, you know, and you want to listen to it three times in a row. Yeah. That's 18 minutes well spent, (laughs) 18, 19, whatever. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I can't wait for this. This comes out, I think, in May sometime. Okay. So we got that first single here and just look it up. That's all I can say. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going to love it. Yeah. I just pray that eventually they'll do North American dates. I'm sure they will. And it'll be like New York and LA, but you know, hopefully at some point something happens where (laughs) they'll go on a festival run or something where we can somehow see this. But yeah, night flight orchestra, look this band up. I'll tell you, you know, a random story whenever I saw soil work. Here a couple years ago in Oklahoma City, I brought it up, you know, when I met him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everybody, you know, is over there talking to him, getting pictures and stuff and going on about the chain heart machine or some shit from 15 years ago. How much I love this or that. You know, I got to him. I said, dude, this album was unbelievable. And his like face lit up. Like literally, I'm not joking. Like he was like shocked that someone in Oklahoma knew what it was. I think. Yes, that's you know, awesome. He was like, he's like, oh wow, are you serious? Yeah, and he just starts talking about it and saying, and I think his quote was like, "Did it make you feel like you were on a a road trip in the middle of the night?" <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, "Yes, it did." I that's listened right. to it all the way to New Orleans. <laughs> you know, yeah, because I literally I drove to New Orleans like for Mardi Gras. I think like a couple weeks before that. I'm like, I listened to him like 20 times that trip, you know, and he's just like, that's perfect. That's exactly what I hoped. <laughs> well, then he did it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So there you go. Mission accomplished. Yeah. Well, Steel Panther has a new album as well. Yes, they do. And it came out this past week called Lower the Bar. And I mean, Steel Panther obviously is one of those bands that you yeah. know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. The question is, how good is it going to be? Yeah. And my thing with Steel Panther is, it's weird, like that first album, I got it, loved it, and then every album that's come out, the first time I listen to it, I'm like, eh, this isn't that great. This isn't as good as the last album. <laughs> and then the second album, then all of a sudden, the second or third time I listen to it, it totally hit me. And then the same thing happened to the third album. And then yeah. now when I listen to this the first time, I'm like, this just isn't up to standard for Steel Panther, okay? Yeah. Outside of three or four songs. But then I listened to it a second and third time, and, and you it all just kind of came yeah. together. You know? Well, I, you know, Steel Panther, it, it's to me, they're all good because you're always going to get, you know, sweet fucking jams that remind you of like 1988. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to laugh on top of it because, I mean, that's that's their thing. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I, I, I can't complain, won't complain. I love it. And, you know, uh, I mean, Poontang Boomerang. Come on. Right. I mean, you know, you got to laugh. Have you seen the video for that? No. See, okay, what it is, he's got a, a pet kitten named Poontang. Okay, and, you know, and when the, the woman comes in that's the Poontang Boomerang that keeps coming back, you know, he can't get rid of her. So he uses the cat named Poontang and throws the cat and the cat goes all the way around the house and comes back to him, boomerang, and hits the girl in the back of the head and he gets rid of the girl. So, so, 
the cat poontang is a poontang boomerang as well. Okay. So, so it's a double yeah. meaning, huh? You're probably about, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 IQ points dumber for having heard that story. <laughs> but I just thought I'd tell it to you anyways. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to look it up now. Yes. Me. You should. You yeah. should. You'll lose even more IQ points. But that's great. <laughs> right. It, you know, keep it simple, stupid. This stuff is hilarious. Yeah. Well, the one thing that they've always excelled at is their ballads. Yeah. Because they craft them like exactly like, I think, you know, they model them after certain songs from the 80s and yeah. early 90s. And then, you know, because I hear stuff that reminds me of some bands sometimes. And, but besides them being hilarious, they're just like perfect. I'm like, if, if this song came out in 1989 and it obviously was censored or yeah. had different lyrics, this yeah. would be like a number one single on the radio. And that's where you came in as another one of those songs it's just like a perfect ballad just like if you really really love me or <laughs> yep. community property or bukkake tears or anything you know <laughs> but, and then well, i said bukkake on the podcast so you're laughing okay <laughs> oh fucking shit but then anyway, wasted too much time that's the one we need yeah. to talk about it starts out sounding like def leopard you yeah. know like a def leopard you know mid-tempo groove laden rocker Ode to your friend Jerry Miller, and uh, and then it goes into you know this awesome thing in the chorus. You know, of course, sounds just like a power ballad. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's so fucking catchy. I mean, yeah. it's so catchy, and it's got that whole guitar melody thing going on. I mean, it's a it's a perfectly crafted song. Uh, it's that 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 wasn't an accident. Yeah, it's the second best song on the album, without yeah. a doubt. I can say that because the first best song is a cover, because you can't, She's tight, you yeah. can't fucking top that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, as far as being the best, hard song. to top cheap trick, right? But yeah, I mean, even speaking of that, you know, we had already heard that because they had released it several months ago. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a perfect song because they don't even have to change the lyrics, and it's already it was already filled with sexual innuendos yeah. from oh yeah, because Robin Zander did that anyway with a lot of their songs, but. It's a perfect song for them to cover, and plus Xander's singing on the chorus, which yeah. even makes it even better. Yeah, exactly. And well, and you know, she's tight. I doubt they're talking about some woman that's you know really smart with her money. They could be. You never know. Well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, it's still. I still think the other three albums are slightly better than this one mm-hmm. overall. But this is a, a good album. You know, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't beat it. <laughs> yeah. So, Steel Panther. Our review, of course, is two, no, five bukkakis up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> right. Well, what else do we got? We want to talk about the, uh, oh, the Rocklahoma madness thing. Let's do it. As into its final four. And we're just bringing this up to let you know that, you know, all four bands that are in the final four are bands that we've, we've pl- actually played them all. Mm-hmm. And we've had three of them on the podcast. Yes. But we've got Driver, The Normandies, Machine in the Mountain, and Less Than Human. Less Than Human being the only band we haven't had on the podcast yet. We've played them. Yeah. So We need to get on that. We, yeah. We, how, how many fucking times have we said that? We've said it on here we're, several times we're just to like terrible. hold ourselves to it, I guess. We're terrible. <laughs> but yeah, you go to kmod.com, unfortunately. And then you find the <laughs> you find the thing that says Rocklahoma Madness. You click on it, and then you click on like fourteen other things. And then after you click on those fourteen things, then you click on you pick the two bands you want, or between the first two bands you want, you click something. Then it sends you to a thing where you got to log in to like iHeartRadio or some shit. <laughs> then you spend another few minutes doing that, and then you click OK, and then it lets you vote for them. And then of course. The second one's easier because you already did all that with the first one. Yeah. And the thing is, you can vote, I think, like once every hour, maybe. I I don't Mm -hmm. know if that's the deal or not, but you can vote as many times as you want. It goes through next weekend, and, you know, I'll say it. I think the voting as many times as you want thing kind of skews these things ridiculously. But, hey, on the good side of that, it makes these bands promote the hell out of themselves, which, you know... I know all four of these bands are already good at doing it anyway. Yes. Because you know, we followed them all. 
like all four yeah seriously all four of these bands are like literally great at doing that and they always have been so you know whoever wins it i'm happy for them because i love all four of them Uh, i mean i gotta gotta agree with you a little bit there um you know these things are always you know uh little dodgy to talk about and to discuss because you know it it you know it kind of drives a wedge between some things um but at the same time you know we want to we still want to talk about it because we want to promote all these bands and we want them to all be victorious uh so just you know there you go yeah yeah, I mean, I mentioned it last time we talked about this. All four of these bands would work great out there for different reasons because all four of these bands are different from each other. And that's what I love about the fact we're sitting here. If these four, they're all totally different from each other in their yeah. sound and style yeah. and what they bring to the table and the type of the type of hard music that they're bringing, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so just get on KMOD and like I said... Spend half an hour figuring out how to do it, and do it. Once you do it once, it's easier the next time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, thanks to KMOD for having a really easy, uh, you know, user friendly uh, interface. <laughs> okay, right. Well, and and also thanks to KMOD for you know going against the grain and not playing the same eight songs an hour. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> Thanks for KMOD for not bringing back Renegade Rock because they actually played different stuff. Yeah, God forbid. Yeah, thanks to KMOD for playing 6 a.m. and that horrible. Uh, never mind, I'm not even it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Should we say something nice? <laughs> no, no not, say- on, not on that one. Okay. I mean, I. Well, no. Nah, nah, nah. Lynn Hernandez, his, uh, you know, lunch hour. Uh, whatever you call it, drive through lunch is good, but that goes to show you something because it's an hour of people requesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I it. think, honestly, and this is not to kiss any kind of ass or anything, I think Lynn Hernandez is the only shining light of that station right now. Right. So that's that's what I would say. Is Lynn Hernandez the Jose of Tulsa? He could be. He could be. I'm talking about Jose Mangan from know. Sirius, for those of you who don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well... Anyway, random different subject. We're on 102.7 WSNR every Monday yes, night. Yes, we are. It's 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. And if that's where you're listening right now, we appreciate it. Come find us on soundcloud.com backslash thunder dash underground. You can hit all, all our back catalog of episodes. We've got 113 previous episodes. There's several where we just talk like this and play some music. And then there's quite a few where we've had on guests. We've had on guys from... COC, Shinedown, Megadeth, The Obsessed, Sons of Texas, Soil, Great White, Battlecross, Death Angel, Overkill, Warrant, Europe, Mike Ariza and Jeff Sandoval from the Frank Hannon Band, uh, Avatar, Drowning Pool, Bullet Boys, Trickster, yeah. and quite a many more. That's right. And just look that up, like I said, on soundcloud.com backslash thunder dash underground. Follow us on Facebook. Get on YouTube. We're at the Thunder Underground. Subscribe to us there. All these episodes go up on YouTube as well, but we also have a new series now called Every Album in a Row, where we, each of us on our own time, spend a couple days, two or three days, however long as it takes, to listen to every album in a row from a specific band. And then we just go through it and album by album and talk about it and how it flows together and our reactions and what we loved, what we didn't, mm-hmm. all that great stuff. We just had one go up for Ozzy the other day. Previous to that, we had Megadeth, Metallica, and Guns N' Roses. We've got uh, Pantera and Van Halen coming. Yeah. Yeah. Pantera will be later this week. Van Halen should be next week, which I'm now halfway through Tattoo. Nice. Is that is it called Tattoo? A different kind of truth. Yeah, a different kind of truth. Different kind of truth. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm nearing the end of that one. Hey, we'll get there, and it's going to be a good one. Um, I also want to say, uh, bands out there, you want us to play your stuff, send it in. We're always looking for stuff to play. 
Yeah, thethunderunderground at gmail.com. That's also the email you can send and ask how many times we're going to say Bukaki next week. Hopefully not many. Right. <laughs> but hey, we sell t-shirts and koozies as well in there. That's right. Throwing stickers, all that great stuff. Exactly. Thethunderunderground.com is the website. And I guess that's it, huh? We're done. All right, until next time. Thunder Underground, y'all. Thunder Underground.